Hi, I'm Soyuna Tag. I'm an attorney and one of the founders of SimVisa. Our channel is about U.S. law, immigration, and other related topics such as travel and even some cultural insights. If this is of interest to you and you want to know more about how the law can better serve you, please subscribe. Also, if you find this helpful, please like the video and comment below as we definitely check those for future videos. Today, we're diving into an important topic for those of you who are about to attend your B1 slash B2 uh, visa interview at the consulate. This type of visa is primarily meant for people who are traveling you know, for tourism, for business purpose, or actually there are many things that are allowed or that are part of this B1 slash B2 visa, including uh, travel for medical purposes and other things. But the important thing is that there are documents that everyone needs to have prepared for the visa interview. And we'll also cover some of the unique documents that you might need depending on the purpose of your travel. First, let's talk about the most foundational document, which is your passport. Of course, you're going to bring a current passport to your interview, but it's really important that you check the expiration date because you wanna make sure that the passport does not expire for at least six months beyond your uh, planned stay or trip to the United States. Technically, some countries, you know, this can be, there can be some agreements or whatever, but the general rule is make sure you've got at least six months beyond, you know, whatever time they're going to be in the United States. So next in line is the DS-160 confirmation page. So this is the form that you submitted before you got to schedule your interview and all that stuff and make sure you have the printout of the confirmation page because you need to bring it with you. Another document that you need to bring is your passport photograph. So yes, you did upload the, you know, the compliant photograph as part of your DS-160 application. However, you make sure you check your uh, embassy or consulate's website because you know, they have specific requirements. Some may want you to bring at least one photo to the interview or whatever it may be. So make sure you double check and you are uh, fully ready. You should also have your visa fee payment receipt. So this is, of course, proof that you pay the proper fees and make sure you have that fee payment receipt with you. Once you've scheduled your interview, you would have received your interview notice or your interview letter and make sure you bring a copy of that with you also. Now, at your B1 slash B2 visa interview, it's of utmost importance that you can demonstrate to the consular officer that you have strong ties to your home country. Now, I say home country, but of course, you could be a citizen of whichever country, but whatever country that you are you know, living at, uh, you know, whether that's for work or for whatever reason, you need to show that you have strong ties to, to the country that you're at and not the United States that call you back so that when you're done with the temporary purpose of your visit to the United States, then you will not stay there and live there, but you will, of course, return uh, to your home country. So, and I've gone on and on and explained this in other videos about the importance of demonstrating your non-immigrant intent by showing, of course, strong ties to your home country, among other things. And, uh, and you can check those out there. But when it comes to documents, you definitely want to bring documents that support and corroborate uh, the strong ties that you that you have. And I feel a little weird saying this because, you know, really the first first and foremost, the visa interview is a person to person interaction. So it's not a time where the officer would be like, oh, we've got all this time. Let me read, comb through and look at all your documents that you brought. So I feel that's this is why I feel kind of odd saying this. And so, but I still recommend that you prepare a thorough you know, set of documentation that are clearly organized. You take it with you with the hope and goal that none of it will be needed and probably none of it will be looked at. In fact, you can't insist that the officer look at any of your documents. You can't be like, do you know how long I spent organizing my uh, bank statements to show my finances, you know, my letters from my employer or showing, you know, my ownership of my home or my other businesses or properties or whatever it may be. Um, you know, you need to look at that. It, it doesn't work like that because a lot of consular officers believe, you know, feel that and, and this is unfortunate because they've seen a lot of fake documents that just about anything can be faked. So vast, you know, the most important thing is establishing your credibility at that interview. Um, but again, even knowing that, you should still be prepared and take uh, supporting documents with you. So again, it can be, like I mentioned already, it can be about your job, it can be about your you know, finances, you know, and other things that would show the strong ties you have to your home country. 
If your primary purpose for traveling to the United States is for medical treatment, then of course you definitely need documentation um, supporting that so that you already have your, um, you know, whether with the physician or the hospital or, you know, whatever organization that's providing you the treatment, um, you want to show, you know, what the illness is, how long the course of treatment will be, as well as, of course, that you've made the financial arrangements and that you have the wherewithal to pay uh, the fees. So um, for this, please check out our uh, video, which will be li which are linked here, um, about specific to uh, traveling to the U.S. On, with a B visa for medical purposes. Let me also point out that, um, and this probably bears a little more emphasis, that you also want to bring documents, aside from you know ties to your home country, uh, documents that support that you have the sufficient funds and wherewithal to support your trip to the United States. So again, that can be bank statements or your you know earning statements or you know whatever it might be but you want to again show that you have the ability to pay for your trip because aside from having immigrant intent which should be a big no-no another concern that consular officers look at is that whether you even if you're going to leave on time whether somebody might engage in unauthorized work and so you know one way to you know help that is to show that no you're going for you know whatever purpose and you have the funds to support your trip. Let me also point out that aside from the all important you know duty you have at this interview to establish your non-immigrant intent by showing your strong ties, uh, you also want to address uh, the finances that you have sufficient you know funds and resources to pay for and to support you for your trip to the United States. And this is because aside from the number one most important thing that the officers are looking at, which is whether you have non-immigrant intent and an immigrant intent that you'll go and stay would be a no-no. Aside from that, they also look at uh, another concern is whether you may engage um, you know, in unauthorized work. So you want to make sure that you can show that you have enough funds and the documents to support that would be like your bank statements, showing the funds you have and, you know, as well as uh, you know your earning statements or your tax returns or other documents that would support uh, you know your financial wherewithal, uh, that would help establish that you're going there for whatever purpose your visit is, whether it's for tourism or whatever. That and that you will not engage in unauthorized work, and that and that you'll be able to come back. So there you have it. It's just a quick video about the basic documents that you really need to make sure you have with you when you're going to your B1, B2. Uh, visa interview at the consulate. However, keep in mind that you know every case is unique, and it and some consulates have actually some different requirements. So you, as always, just like with the photographs, you want to check your the specific requirements uh, of your consulate. So make sure you check their website and what documents they want you to bring, and and make sure you're as prepared as you can, knowing that none of it may be looked at, and that's entirely up to the officer. So, um, and I know I went kind of a long time about how the interview is so much more about the person-person -person interaction. So again, let me say, they may not look at your documents, but it, I think it's still fully worth your while to go with everything prepared. So I wish you the best of luck. And I think there's so much to do and see and experience in the United States. So I wish you a great trip here, whatever your purpose may be.